Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Scaffey, and I work on the education team at the National Hemophilia Foundation. It is my pleasure to welcome you to NHF's Super 7 Storytime series. Super 7 is a children's book targeted to kids, age, kids ages 8 to 12 with ultra-rare bleeding disorders, but everyone will find something to enjoy. The series will include various bleeding disorder community members who share a little bit about themselves and read a chapter from the book. Now, if you can join us during NHF's pajama book launch party, please feel free to watch the party on our YouTube channel where Dr. Len Valentino reads the first chapter of the book and where you can hear the other chapters from other community members. And again, please note every week, NHF will publish a new video with the chapter reading from the book Super 7 for you to watch on your own time. You'll also notice our guests are in our pajamas and we encourage you to watch all of these in your pajamas too. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome our final guest of the Storytime series, Don Rodolini. Hi, Don. Hi, Nicole. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, we're so excited to have you here with us today to read the final chapter of Super 7. The final chapter. But before we read the final chapter, um, I wanted to ask you a few questions so our audience can get to know a little bit more about who Don is. So sure. with that, I'll keep it simple. Um, I'll start with, what state are you from? I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lovely. I heard they have some good sports teams there. Yes, they happen to have some great sports teams here, specifically football and hockey. Got it. Got it. So um, with that, do you mind sharing your community affiliation with us? Yeah, not at all. Um, so I am the Chief Operating Officer of the National Hemophilia Foundation, but I'm also the mom of a 22-year-old son with Hemophilia B. That's how I got involved. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, I'm going to flip subjects really quick and ask you a very important question. What is your favorite food and or snack? <laughs> okay, so my favorite food is popcorn. I love popcorn and I love all flavors of popcorn. So that's like my go-to. All flavors? I mean, I was going to ask you if you have a particular flavor, but like you could be that person to take like the butter and the cheese and the caramel, put it all in one and love it. No, I can't no. do that. Sweet does not go with non-sweet. So I might have sweet popcorn one night, but then I might have white cheddar cheese popcorn the next night. So I don't mix them. I got it. So there's a method to the popcorn strategy. There's a method. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Well, with that, uh, this will be the last question I ask you. And I want to know, uh, why is the book Super 7 important to you? Boy, I the very first time I was able to read through this book, I realized what an amazing resource it is for parents and families to be able to connect with their children and tell the story about Tanner and just find the similarities that Tanner has with their own children with bleeding disorders. I was thinking way back when my 22 year old son was not 22 and he might've been three or four years old to cuddle up at night and read a story to have it be something what is, that showcased him that he could identify with and relate to would have been amazing. So to me, it's so important. It reduces isolation. It's where kids can see themselves in a book. And I just, I think it's amazing. I'm really, I'm really happy to be part of this. Uh, well, we're happy to have you be a part of it too. And, and thank you so much for sharing that. And I agree. I think everybody needs a story for them that they can relate to. And that's definitely what Super 7 can provide for a lot of our community members. Well, with that, I'd like to pass it off to you to read us the final chapter of Super 7. So Dawn, would you be so kind to do us the honors? I would be happy to, and I am privileged to. So chapter 14, mom, dad, and Victoria, let me talk about basketball and the game all during dinner. They all said they were really proud of me and I felt proud of myself too, but I was pretty tired and my ankle was achy. I must have jumped up and down on the sidelines too much in that final quarter. If I actually played, I'd probably be in a lot of pain right now. I grabbed an ice pack from the freezer and headed to my room to watch a movie on my laptop. I settled into my bed, foot up on the pillow, and an ice pack on top of it. Before the movie started, mom came in. She ruffled my hair and sat down on my bed. I almost tried to play in the game, mom, I found myself saying, but then I decided not to. I wasn't actually sure why I told her. I thought maybe she'd be mad, but it felt good to talk about it. 
No more secrets. Mom didn't look mad and she put her hand on mine. Also next year, when basketball starts up again, when I make it onto the team again, I said confidently, I'm going to tell my teammates. I'm going to tell them about my bleeding disorder. I think I need to. Then if I need to sit out again, they'll understand why. It will still feel bad, but at least they'll know that I'm not letting them down on purpose. Sounds like a good idea. Mom squeezed my hand and nodded. Tanner, Mom said, I wish you knew someone who could understand what you're going through. I try my best, but I know it's not quite the same. I told Mom about Abigail, Abby. I explained that I'd told her today about my bleeding disorder after she told me she had diabetes. I didn't tell her that I also just think Abby is, well, cool. It felt good. Abby seemed to really get it, but it's not quite the same, Mom. I wish I knew someone with a bleeding disorder, I laughed. Maybe I wish these disorders weren't quite so rare. And Mom grinned. Well, honey, she said, I happen to have a surprise. She pulled out a pamphlet and handed it to me. I've applied for you to go to a summer camp for kids with bleeding disorders this summer. It's put on by a chapter that's affiliated with the National Hemophilia Foundation. You know about the foundation, right? I nodded. The camp has all kinds of activities, ropes courses, archery, swimming, and yes, basketball. It's for kids with bleeding disorders and siblings can go too, even if they don't have a bleeding disorder themselves. Seriously? A camp with other kids like me, I said? Yeah, but you can think about it. I, I applied, but you don't have to go, Tanner, mom said. There's lots of time to decide. So I wanna show you this picture. See how mom and Tanner are right on the bed and they're talking and it's, look at the, the basketball behind them. That's so cool. So, wow, mom, I don't think I need to think about it. I'm in. I said, reaching over and hugging her. Thanks so much, she laughed. Okay, honey, we'll talk about it some more. Tomorrow, I asked. Sure, tomorrow, she said, grinning. She got up. Are you okay? Do you want another ice pack? No, I'm good, I said. Okay, don't stay up too late, Tanner. Love you, mom said. A moment later, I was on my feet, tapping lightly on Victoria's door. My sister was already in bed with her light out, but she said sleeper, sleepily, yeah, Tanner? Hey, Vic, I said, plopping down on the bed beside her. Want to go to camp in the summer with your favorite brother in the whole world? Victoria smiled. Okay, she said. She added it in a serious voice. You know you are my favorite brother in the whole world. I squeezed her toes as I said goodnight and headed back to my own room. Foot on pillow, ice pack in place, I thought about the camp, the game, the day, Abby, Jax, my family, and my life. Super seven for sure. One of a kind, but a very lucky guy. The end. Oh my gosh, the end! Such Thank a good ending! I love it! Thank you so much for reading the final chapter of, to us today, Don. You did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Thanks. Thanks. I loved it. Oh, you're very I'm welcome. I'm so excited for Tanner to go to camp. I can't wait. Maybe there will be a sequel and we get to hear about camp. Maybe. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> good. Well, everybody, thank you for joining myself and Don today and all of our guests throughout this series. And as we can conclude, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in over the last few weeks. I hope, I hope you enjoyed hearing from other community members and learned some new lessons along the way. And never forget, you are not alone. As we heard in this story, you need your friends, you need your family, you need your teachers and your coaches. So never forget to reach out to those people and know that you're not alone. Thank you all again for being part of Super 7, enjoying it, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.